Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome to our webinar on the architecture on the CTEC Cayuga VMS. My name's Richard Bell, and I'll be your presenter for this afternoon. Now, for those of you who haven't joined us before for a webinar, I'll run through uh, some of the main points, uh, if you can remember. Um, firstly, you may see that you're muted, so please remain in the muted during the course of this uh, webinar. You know, if you have any questions uh, during the time that we're presenting, uh, please type them here and click send. You know, I'll attempt to answer these if time permits or email the answer to you after the um, close of the webinar. Now, if there are any downloads available during the webinar, you can see them from the bottom right hand side of the, uh, the screen and you can get those in the PDF format and you can download them um, at your leisure. And if you want some more room at the top of your screen, uh, you can click the, um, the button to move the control panel over to the side uh, and free up a bit more real estate. Anyway, just uh, covering a couple of points which we went through from last week's uh, session on the overview, it's about CTEC uh, in general. You know, they were founded back in 97. So they've been around for um, a couple of decades now. You know, and they were the first uh, video management software company worldwide, you know, back in uh, 99, privately owned. They merged with on SSI in uh, April 2015, and probably their uh, big claim to fame is you know, they've got more than 100,000 installations around the world. Now, they have a number of verticals which they look at, you know, such as you know, banking, logistics, correctional, you know, industrial retail, and transportation. Again, their headquarters is in uh, Bruchel in Germany, but they have a number of uh, branches scattered around the globe, you know, with an extensive distributor network. So their support is very good. Anyway, just a, uh, a quick recap from uh, last week's overview of Kuga and the various uh, versions of uh, the software that's available. But yeah, the main thing to, to keep in mind that uh, we should stress is that the system can grow and expand you know, without any need for, you know, hardware to become redundant. So uh, it's, you know, a reminder that you're sort of, you know, it's the, you're not thinking, oh, well, do I have to get a bigger box to handle this in future or whatever? You know, nothing's not going to be uh, an issue that you can actually grow. You can start with a, you know, a 10 camera system and expand that to 100, you know, 200, 300 and beyond. And again, you know, the way that we've tried to keep it as simple as our, yeah, the way we describe you know, our small, medium, large and jumbo configurations. And they just build on the different feature set, you know, uh, what's there. And again, as the uh, said about the hardware, the same thing with the software that you can just go and enhance that. So if you do need some of the features, you know, with, you know, failover and redundancy as your uh, system progresses, you only just have to pay for the difference. You know, there is no financial disadvantage, you know, um, by just starting off with uh, the basic system. Again, that's just, uh, probably the brief overview when we go from you know, left to right, you know, from the S50 all the way up to the Infinity X, about our ranges, starting up from our know, system will uh, support up to 50 cameras to an unlimited uh, number of cameras and you know, servers uh, and with you know, redundancy and failover um, and those, some of those high-end features that are required in uh, corporate and enterprise environments. Anyway, we'll start with this uh, line diagram and um, we'll then break this down and we'll come back and look at some of the various um, components about how the uh, building blocks uh, are put together within the Cayuga VMS. Um, this one here is just showing, you know, it's two locations and again, you know, not everybody has two, you know, multiple locations. But, um, and how they are linked, you know, whether it's just directly over the internet, uh, which is possible, or that you may be through um, a VPN with the, uh, the enterprise, um, that's, you know, uh, entirely doable as well. Again, the building blocks, uh, as we see on the right-hand side in the blue item with uh, location two, with server one, there's one part there called the core service master. Every system has a core service master or a CSM is, uh, is probably the easy way, you know, the acronyms that we uh, refer to. And that has the database and the information of the layout, the cameras, the users, um, et cetera, on the system. 
Again, every site has a CSM, and you might also have a CSS, which is a core server slave. It doesn't need to. Again, that's in a, um, a backup and a failover side of uh, the configuration, and we'll look at that in next week's webinar when we're talking about failover and redundancy. Uh, in addition to your CSM, you've got uh, device managers, the DMs as they are referred to, which are typically your recording servers for your equipment, your cameras um, around the place, and then you've also got your various clients, um, how they are either a web client, mobile, um, or local LAN, or um, coming across uh, the network. So if we start to break it down, and we look at the basis. Again, the inputs are either these days some of the legacy uh, analog uh, cameras, which are coming in via encoders, or IP cameras. You know, both are connected to your VMS, you know, your uh, infrastructure via Ethernet um, switches. And again, they may be also having uh, analytics associated with them, and that analytics is supported with iCougar either on the edge at the, um, the camera end, or it can be um, server-based analytics. So um, it's uh, entirely up to you and the customer, and there are a number of the manufacturers and the camera suppliers where their analytics are supported directly with inside the, uh, the software. Again, with the cameras that are connected, um, a lot of these uh, parameters can also come down to the size of the pipe or your network locally and or across um, for remote locations. And you can have you know, multiple streams you know, that are coming back. The device manager you know, shown in the center in green, which is like the hub, that's where all your cameras um, are being recorded to with their video data. And we can see on the right-hand side, uh, there are you know, three different colors um, shown at different resolutions and different frame rates. And again, that's possible, you know, that you've got a recorded stream, you have a live stream, and then the lower one in red, you know, it's only a SIF resolution that in, uh, at eight frames, and that's using um, for either something like the analytics uh, component, or it could be for a mobile connection over a, um, an app you know, with a phone for remote access where you do not need, or it's just a reduced bandwidth um, side of things. Again, attached to the device manager, again, we try and have it as hardware ag as agnostic as possible, uh, whether they can just be uh, NAS boxes, uh, JBODs, um, it's all open Windows uh, architecture. It's not a proprietary side of things you know, to connect to the, the CTEC components. So if we look just at the server infrastructure, this is the heart of the um, organization of the VMS. And how we've got it here, we've got a master and a slave, as I mentioned briefly at the top. And this is probably how it would be in a larger you know, corporate type enterprise system. You don't need to have both a master and a slave. You may just have the master, and they then talk to your DMs or your advice managers, you know, recording servers, where all your cameras are connected. Now, this is in a large side of things. So if we want to keep it simple, and it, you know, when I mean simple on the smaller side, this can still be you know, 100 or 200 cameras, where we can look at this scenario here, where the CSM or the core service and a recording server can all be on the one server. It doesn't have to have a dedicated unit just for its uh, database and management side of things. So that's a benefit that we see that in terms of you know, the cost effectiveness that you can actually run everything on, on all in one box for your management and your um, video uh, storage. Again, it's um, sized accordingly, and depending on the CPU and the amount of disks, with you know, in terms of resolution and uh, what's required. And yeah, you know, this is easily determined, you know, by their calculator, which is available online that you can go and uh, search. Um, for the server configurator, you put in the various cameras that you want and its frame rates, uh, recording time, etc., and it will give you a recommendation in terms of the server size, the server uh, CPU uh, classification, and the power required, and whether it needs one or multiple servers. And you can export that into um, a PDF um, document and download that. 
uh, when you, uh, you know, like, therefore. Now, as I said, but the system can grow. And again, yeah, this is not as if you uh, need a magic uh, crystal ball to look at but the size of the things. Again, the uh, top box here, we've got our um, CSM and device manager and database in the one box. And the difference between the one before, we're just adding additional um, DMs to the actual system. And that may be uh, for two reasons. You know, the customer has you know, increased the amount of cameras that they've got on the network, or they need you know, longer um, storage time. They may need to go from 30 to 60 days, for example. So you know, that's in the, the smaller side of things. And then as it gets larger, they just add another box and that to it and keeps on going. Again, the clients um, that you need to have connected so, to it are all uh, managed through the core system and uh, they know to uh, where to get their um, data stream from accordingly. Now, there are a number of uh, different ways to view the data, yeah, as we saw in that uh, main overview. You know, most commonly, you know, if you've got a PC that's sitting on the local network uh, where the servers are located, and that's uh, running at, you know, at LAN speed, and, you know, that's one way of doing it. Um, but again, we're not locked down or restricted. And even on the local network, you know, you've got the web client, and that provides, you know, a lot of the same functionality as a thick client on the system. Though there's a couple of things, you know, that uh, are reduced, like the maximum uh, frame rate is uh, 12 frames per second that you can see over your cameras uh, that are being displayed in that uh, item. Your mobile client, you know, that may be an iOS or an Android device. Both are supported uh, the, um, in that side of things. Um, we also SDKs are available and are published, and that could be for, you know, PSIM, um, equipment or other access control and alarm uh, systems and there are a number of them that are all published and supported and uh, direct interface you know whether it's something like you know a Linnell Gallagher Cypass you know they're all in um, existence and now those had your lies and how they talk via their clients to the CTEC system. And while it's shown on the left-hand side, the, the, the grey boxes such as the gateway service and the transcoding engine, you know, they are not separate um, physical pieces of hardware. They are components that sit in the main core system and a management database. So in terms of hardware complexity, it is still having those uh, components in the one physical server. So you're not overcomplicating it. Now, the, these boxes are um, supportable in a virtual network, you know, such as VMware. If the, your customer has uh, that scenario or would like to virtualize it, it's uh, fully compatible with that side of things with virtualization as it's a becoming a growing technology as such as we move forward. Now, when you said about some of the remote side of things now, in addition to your uh, your clients that you've got on your local LAN, you may have a remote office that you're going to uh, want to have connected. And again, this depends on the size of the pipe and your internet, um, both upstream and downstream links. And this is supported in a number of uh, methods. You, know, you can just have a direct NAT um, interface uh, between them. And uh, we do that between our, our offices uh, where we've got uh, CTEC systems uh, set up. Um, it's also uh, fully supported via VPN. So you can take advantage of the encrypted uh, transmission between those um, two sites. But it's relatively easy to set up. And again, this can be restricted to you know, the users as what uh, they have available um, there. The other side of things when we're looking at re, uh, remote sites is that uh, with reduced bandwidths, you know, your resolution, you, know, you may have these on a video wall you know, as a remote client uh, in a you know, three by three or a four by four display. And while it's in that smaller format, it gives a general overview to see the actual image, but we can apply user profiles to those particular ones. So if somebody wants to see the, a particular camera full screen, and when they double click on that, that will then pull that image down in its full native resolution if that's the way that the system's been configured. So that's a, um, a 
advantage you know for the customer that they're not having to pay for a large um, bandwidth connection for the just in case side of things that they're only going to be looking at full screen images you know every so often they don't need to have them there all the time and so that can be set up uh, in the profiles for the clients about how they talk to the uh, the main VMS uh, boxes one thing we also spoke briefly about last week uh, and the way that the uh, video matrix uh, works within Koyuga, we know that as a display agent, again, that is in the S100 and up systems. That's uh, um, and it's not licensed per screen, uh, or per user, or per site. It's actually in there per se. So if you wish to deploy one uh, display agent or ten display agents, um, it does not matter, and they are applicable to. Uh, users that they can just drag and drop uh, the res respective cameras onto the screens and um, uh, display the cameras from a site from a particular uh, um, recorded template that you've got there you might already have some that are set up automatically so it's a matter of you know two mouse clicks and you can just throw that up to um, a display agent wall and again the the way that it can be uh, controlled, like the Cayuga clients, you know, make the best use of it. So after hours, you may have a number of clients that are connected to the uh, the LAN, and you can turn these into uh, display agents, you know, uh, for evening um, staff, so they have the benefit of having their own small uh, video matrix wall on their desk beside them. And again, that's again done by the user interface by you know two mouse clicks. So it is relatively easy to change that uh, scenario. Some of the size limitations, what we've got and the architecture, again, they keep it as standard as possible. It's a Windows supported platform. And again, you see from the bullet points down the side, you know, they support you know, 2008 R2, 2012, and in the current 2016. They're all supported in their platforms, you know, as well as your client uh, operating systems, you know, 7, 8.1, and 10. Um, saying that for the clients, the uh, side of things, you know, you may have a small site, you know, small could be, you know, 10 or 20 uh, um, cameras, for example, um, you can have a combined server and client running on, you know, uh, Windows 10. You know, you do not need to actually have a larger um, server-based operating system just because, you know, you've just got a lower amount of cameras. And again, you can start, that customer can start off um, in that fashion as well. And if they're going to grow the system, you know, 50, 60 cameras, you know, then they can migrate that. You know, we can take the database and the configuration files from that uh, combined server and workstation and import those into a larger, you know, rack mount um, unit that's got more storage and then turn that original um, server workstation into a dedicated uh, client only uh, workstation. So it's flexible for what you can do there. And in terms of you look at the sizing, uh, how the system can grow, again, it all depends on your resolution, um, storage time, uh, et cetera. But you know, we can cater for up to 250 devices per server in a 64-bit operating system. So you know, that's a reasonable amount of uh, cameras you know, on one piece of tin that you've got around the place. And with 250 servers or DMs you know, do in a distributed installation. So you can do the maths there, there and see that you've got a large uh, camera capacity system that can be deployed. And one of the other things that we really like to uh, emphasize that the DMs, the device managers, you know, they only need to be a single CPU configuration. They are not overly hardware intensive on the um, support uh, for the camera's requirements for recording. Um, and you know, that's a very important point. You know, if you're going to be having you know, two and three and four servers, you know, it all adds up to cost you know, on the bottom line. So um, again, this can be you know, confirmed you know, by the online server um, configurator tool that I mentioned earlier. You can just go to the CTEC uh, site uh, and uh, just try and, just, and uh, see how many cameras you can actually put in there and have a look at the different sizings about uh, how large it gets before it actually asks you to, that you need um, a second server to put in uh, the system. So I think you might be pleasantly surprised. So in terms of cost effectiveness to deploy uh, the VMS, 
um, it is a, a very good system, you know, what we've found and very competitive in the marketplace. So I'll come back to that original um, uh, line diagram that we had in the beginning and uh, how it's all connected. You know, we've got two systems here. But again, you know, if we just looked at, you know, the right hand side, you know, uh, where we've got location two, you know, you've got a CSM and you've got a client there um, connected to it. And it's also got external, um, you know, NAS or SAN storage. Um, how it grows, it's entirely up to you. It's like the old saying, there's more than one way, you know, to skin the cat. And that's the case, uh, what we can do uh, with uh, Cayuga. Um, and especially, you know, we'll look at some things in uh, next week's uh, uh, webinar about failover and redundancy, and it'll build on some of the items I've discussed today. And you'll see that's even more so where it becomes more cost effective about how to have a, a resilient system um, that you know, takes care of failures in, uh, in hardware and in software. Uh, you know, one other part which I did mention last week and I've, uh, I didn't say much about today, if you look on the left-hand side on location one, down the bottom is the CTEC, you know, the Anywhere client. Um, the, any, the actual client and also the viewer is also packaged in this uh, scenario that uh, this is able to run, you know, off a single, um, off a USB key if that's a, a requirement. Um, it does not install any um, software on the system, you know, a user may not have rights to be able to install that they may be locked down by the Active Directory configuration of the customer. But, you know, by doing this, you are getting the same functionality of the thick client as you are um, with the Anywhere client, but it's just an easy way to deploy. The viewer, yeah, especially is more so the case because it allows you to look at uh, recorded video in the um, uh, CTEC format and uh, export and view and uh, manipulate and do what you need. So that's a, a good side of things as well. The other uh, advantages where you can go and grow this, this is in the larger systems and we'll talk about this next week, their monitor walls, you know, with something like Barco and Evis uh, interfaces where we're looking in like large shopping centres, industrials, uh, um, large control rooms, could be airports, where they actually uh, interface directly. You know, you're uh, showing uh, six monitors there. So you can actually have a client um, spit out its image and take out uh, all that real estate um, directly. So that's um, straight out of the box uh, in Infinity X side of things. So that's on a very large uh, scale for their monitor walls. So uh, in summary, again, you know, whether it's analog or IP um, connections, um, we've got, you know, there are literally hundreds and again, uh, that's available to be downloaded as well. The uh, configuration list for all the uh, supported manufacturers, um, we've tested a number of uh, third party products and even a couple of proprietary ones uh, from some other um, uh, recording platforms out there and uh, they all work on the CTEC solution. So, it's uh, a very flexible one and it, in terms of you know, upgrading from existing uh, hardware, uh, it makes it as cost effective as possible where you may have to leave some of the existing uh, encoders and that on site that you can't do a rip and replace um, in the initial instance, but you can grow with your customer. So um, that's basically the quick overview of um, the VMS, uh, well, you know, the parts that we just really want to stress that, you know, you can start small and you can grow large and your hardware doesn't become redundant and it will grow with you and you can move your databases, you know, from a small you know, system that's a combined server workstation up to a dedicated platform and expand that um, accordingly. So, uh, but uh, again, if you'd like to know uh, some more, um, there are all the social media platforms uh, that are listed down at the bottom. Our um, YouTube uh, site has uh, further information um, about the CTEC platform. And uh, you can also contact either of my colleagues, either Jeff Rushton or Chris Ireland, you know, if you're after any additional information on uh, what we've uh, spoken about there today. But uh, please feel free to have a look at our website and uh, have a look at uh, uh, the resources that are there. 
and you can register online and you can receive full access to your uh, e-commerce platform and they'll have all your pricing and your order placement availability and that you know as well you know, that you can do so we're getting near the end of the year and uh, we've got one last remaining uh, webinar it's uh, next thursday the 13th and that's going to cover uh, a failover and redundancy uh, we'll probably take two or three slides from here that we're going to uh, speak about with the uh, the csm and css um, and expand on that and about how uh, you can actually uh, slice and dice and run these systems in uh, and what happens in what they call island mode if they lose uh, their communications and what happens with the recordies uh, files when the systems come back online but we'll cover that uh, next week so um, I uh, thank you for your time this afternoon. It's uh, if it's been useful, uh, that's even uh, more so. But uh, feel free to contact us at any stage um, if you'd uh, like any additional information on the Cayuga VMS. So enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you very much. Goodbye.